Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the, what month is it? Come on. It's August workshop for the Society of Advice. We're glad you're here. So excited for this one. There is so much to get through. Today, we're going to dive into, into white papers. We've put together a bunch of um, worksheets and outlines and all that stuff will be in the portal at the end of the call or shortly after the call. My real goal today is to get to lots of kind of spot coaching Q and a based on all of your replies about, about writing and white papers in general. So, okay. Forget the word white paper, right? It's just a placeholder. This is really about writing, creating, cre I'm going to use this word content, even though I really dislike it, but I think it, it works for what we're talking about here, creating content that will help you make a bigger impact on people's lives. For this workshop, the artifact just happens to be a white paper. I think it's a unique kind of artifact and done the, done the right way. I think it can have a unique impact. But please understand the principles we're going to cover could work for any artifact, a book, a podcast, a marketing brochure, right? So is everybody okay? Don't get too hung up. There was a lot of emails about that. Like, I don't know what a white paper is. I don't know. Totally get it. But just realize for this call, we're, we're, we're both artifact agnostic and we're talking about a specific artifact at the same time. So just be an adult and hold those two things in your head at the same time. Okay, white papers. I like the term, John Bowen first taught me about the power of white papers. I like the term white paper as a specific artifact for marketing. Now realize you're gonna go into it without marketing as your goal. This is one of those tricks you have to play on yourself. Marketing can't be the goal, love is the goal. <laughs> and by love, I mean, solving people's problems is the goal. Like, honestly, love is the goal, not marketing. If you get that firmly in your head, it will be one of the most powerful marketing things you ever do. But marketing can't be the goal. So you, like, it's a real, it's a real, like, you just got to get yourself in the right headspace. Okay. So a specific white paper feels a little bit like a guide, a report, a piece of investigative journalism, right? The idea here is there's a group of people that have a problem. And by problem, again, I, those of you who are new, we've got lots of new people, tons of people joined the last three months. When we we're here, when we use the word problem, we're using it in the definition of the word, something to solve for. It's not loaded negative or positive. It's just something to solve for. It's like a math problem. Sometimes we use the word puzzle to make it feel a little bit more playful. With a white paper, niches are really important. I think marketing in general. The key to thinking about niches is relevance. When you get an email from somebody that is relevant to you, you open it. When you get an email from somebody that is not relevant to you, you delete it. The shortcut to relevance is occupation. You want to find a problem that you're interested in solving. And then a group of people who have that problem. This idea of understanding the problem is going to be very important in the white paper. Who, who, who would like to talk a bit about how I could help you in front of everybody else move to writing the white paper? Who wants to chat? I'll share something, Carl. Yeah, so please. You actually already answered it, so but I'll share what it was prior to you answering it, which is I've always felt like there's white papers on everything. I want to share something original. Mm -hmm. And my focus was on wanting to share something original mm -hmm. versus the focus on writing about solving a specific person's problem. So, so what, original solved, talk, yeah. what answered your question? What, what answered your question? Uh, turning the focus to helping that person that you will never work with that's in a specific you know situation. Versus maybe just wanting to come up with a original topic since there's yeah, white papers, yeah, yeah. videos on everything. Yeah. Isn't that great? Like you don't have, this is what's so interesting about this. You do not have to be a creative nonfiction writer or fiction writer. Like you're literally just reporting on what you heard from people. And then you're outlining the real financial planning process that we all are familiar with anyway. I mean, you could literally do the seven steps from the CFP board. Do you know what I mean? Like in your own words. But the creative piece to this, the reason that's valuable is no one's taken the time to understand and codify 
and communicate their problems in their words. You've all felt this. No one's taken the time to understand you. And in our industry, we just chuck prescriptions at people. So in, in essence, just taking the time to listen and then write what you heard is super creative and unique because it's not, it's not like you didn't have to come up with a new idea. You just, but you're the only one who's really done it, especially for architects who own their own firms in the suburbs of Minneapolis. Cool. Thanks, Justin. Uh, Richard, jump in. Two years ago, I think I've always been intimidated by doing it. And in one of maybe our late November call a couple of years ago, Carl, you just said, you've got to break it down into smaller pieces and um, react to something you read or write up something when you, when you've spoken with a client and it's landed in a really unique or special mm -hmm. way to, to write that down. And um honestly coming off of that started writing and just said, Hey, I'm going to write 200, 250 words at a time and just, just build it in small pieces and trust that if I do, if I do 200 words, 10 times that that's 2000 words. And I begin to build something that is, is really cohesive and significant. And honestly, that just totally unlocked my content mm. generation. And, and if, probably written 180 or 200 individual posts in the last 18 months just by doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been unbelievable. So good. Yeah. Keep in mind, you guys have all got content coming out of your ears. You just don't think of it that way. Jeremy, you and I had, Jeremy, are you here? Canada, Jeremy? I'm here. You I, walk me through um, what you've been working on and where you were getting sort of hung up. See, I think coming into this the kind of my inspiration was for anybody that had listened to your conversation with Adam Schmela that was probably 2020 so it's a few years ago yeah on solving you know marketing by solving problems I think that was my inspiration because a lot of what we talked about today is was the conversation that you had with Adam and for me it was I was blown away with when he started talking about for him it was optometrists just how much he knew about the world of optometry. Right, right. It blew me away. Somebody that's yeah. a financial planner in the world of wealth advice knows this much about optometry. Yeah. Yep. I said to myself, like, wow, like that, that calls to me, like that wandering generalist versus the meaningful specific. In Q2 it was let's do some niche research. And, and it was kind of easy for me because I do have a friend and I'm, I'm not targeting dental practice owners and new practice owners because you wrote a white paper on, on dental uh, dentist, but right. I have a good friend who recently went from seven years of associateship as a dentist to now going through all those challenges and starting his first private practice. So I've kind of used him as my, uh, my first research candidate. And, and from that, I've had three other conversations with, with other dental owners in, in town. And that's kind of been the, the genesis of this Q3 is let's, let's take what we've learned and what we're listening to from, from dental owners and, uh, and consider writing a white paper. So that's been, been kind of my focus uh, this time around. Amazing. Have you done interviews yet? Three. Yeah. Three. Okay. But one thing, not just that, that I've heard from all three of them, they're saying my craft is my focus. Oh. I think what they're saying is, and one thing that I, I want to maybe consider in tweaking my paper in the abstract is the zinger being, I didn't know how to optimize a P&L coming out of dental yeah. school and as an associate. Yeah back to like the focus being a clinician, being a great dentist, not being uh, a yeah. successful business owner. Yeah, so good. And then you just have to remember, like, did the dentist actually use the word P&L? I've heard P&L thrown around so much. Fascinating. So I would just, I would use that then. Like, but if they didn't, I was just wanted to check that as, as an example for everybody, that we sometimes, they say certain words and we say, oh yeah, you mean P&L. You would want to use the words they used. And in this case, it's P&L. So thanks, Jeremy. Um, let me look real quick. Let me show you, I'm going to share just, we have a couple of examples that aren't mine. Uh, I believe at least mine will be in the portal for you to see. So this is an idea of like, just where Jeremy's getting started. Um, here's, I also love this, this Exxon Mobil, um, from Brownlee, you know, seven, this is specific for Exxon Mobil professionals and retirees. Okay. Let me do some rapid fire questions. 
Yeah, I was just curious on the white paper, if you find it more effective at the lead gen stage, like on the website and social media, or more so when they've actually scheduled a preliminary appointment as a prospect. Uh, if if one thing I would probably do is I would set up a landing page. I would be tempted to put this as my home page if I if I were you, just because I'm dramatic that way. Mm -hmm. Um I think we ask our, I think we ask our web pages to do way of websites to do way too much. They're like beasts of burden that we've asked to do impossible things. So if it were, but the, the short answer, sorry, the short way shortcut to that is set up a landing page. So it could be your domain slash whatever. And when you land on the landing page, nail the problem in one sentence right there, right? Like, uh, you know, if you're like most dentists, you feel like you're chained to the chair. If you're not at work, you're not making money. We've been researching this problem. In fact, we wrote a white paper on it. Mm. It's available for download here. If you like this, once the paper's written, you can say, if you like this, you love my white paper. To download it, go here. So you're always just giving people, if you like this little snippet I gave, it's valuable. I hope it's valuable. If you never talk to me again, I hope you think of me as a valuable person. If you'd like to go deeper, go here. You're making it really easy. I hope that's helpful. Thanks. I know we covered a ton today. We're out of time. Thanks again. Thanks for the work you do on behalf of the people. Cheers. Deb, how many calls have you been on? I think I've been on about three now. Three now. I just joined earlier in the year. How did you, how, tell me what your impression was of today. Today was really helpful. Uh, I, I felt like it was... Um, White papers are actually a, a struggle for me. And I'm glad how you framed it in the beginning of like, this is just one way of content creation and, and reaching, you know, your, your target audience. Very good. Well, thank you. Um, let me ask you, Danina, a question. What, um, if somebody was standing outside your door when you came out of the workshop and they asked you, what's the one thing you took away and you only got one? Mm. What would, what would, what would you tell them? What was the key insight for you? Um, you know, share the love, um, sharing our knowledge. We shouldn't feel like we need to keep it a secret because sometimes mm -hmm. like I'm doing a presentation. Um, and of course, sometimes I think, oh, why am I sharing all my good stuff? Right, right. <laughs> and then, you know, you wrap your head around that again. And you other days you're going, yes, I'm going to share my good stuff because these are people all across Canada that are going to be at this conference. They're not going to do what I do. They're not my competition. Yeah. So I am sharing the love by yeah. sharing the knowledge and how I got to the conclusions that I came to and the decisions that I've made. Pete, what, what would you say was your one takeaway if somebody asked you? Yeah, I guess if I had to pick one, it'd be um, stop trying to craft it to sell someone on something just mm. give it away you know and it, mm. that resonates with me because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a musician and I, I i just try to do stuff that i like you know basically yeah. and i don't expect to make any money on it frankly there's a different side of the i mean i don't expect to make any money but i think it's yeah if you do something that's true to yourself and you don't really expect a lot of return i think that's the only way to re really kind of conduct yourself and and, and in life basically so um, yeah i love that that's really good deb what 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 actual action will you take because of today's call i already started writing some ideas for a white paper on it's designed specifically for marketing firm owners that are mm. looking to have their business exit ready even if they don't want to exit very cool so i started brainstorming some ideas of what I was going to put in the white papers. Yeah, it's amazing. Janine, what, what will you, what action will you take? That I can actually at this stage um, right now, actually write a white paper because I want new clients. Oh, nice. For the, yeah. For the last five years, I haven't had capacity. Yeah. And my new hire should oh, bring right. that capacity. So wow. I'm so excited. That's amazing. Pete, what do you, what, what action could you see yourself taking? 
No, it just made me think that um, I've, I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And ever since I started, I had a niche that I identified with, in my case, federal employees. And so I've always thought that was my niche, but it's really not a meaningful part of my income now. I'd like it's getting there, but it's very slow. So I just have to think about, okay, I don't know if there's a niches are great. I'm all on board, but I don't know if it's for me in the end. I don't, I have, so that's something I'm going to have to see if I have like a two niches or something, you know, I don't know if that's realistic yeah. or not, but it's basically, you know, it's time to fish or cut bait on, on this thing, I think, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. And it's always, whenever we have these conversations, it's always really important to remember that like you can intentionally design a business not around, there's no wrong or right or wrong answer. Sam, welcome. Hey, sorry. I was off half an hour on my calendar. Well, then it looks like you're seven minutes early. <laughs> well, I was seven minutes early until I realized <laughs> that I was 22 minutes late. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Well, what was the key insight for you? No, I think it was right towards the beginning of the call, Carl, and it was very powerful. It's just that if you love, if you love someone, if you love a group of people, you will find a way. That was really, I mean, I've almost got goosebumps slash tears in my eyes, really just even thinking about that. Like I work for a big firm and all these excuses around compliance and why I can't do this. And, you know, just you spending time at the beginning talking about just, you know, don't own your index on the white paper or whatever it is, right? Just, and then just that conversion, you know, that the love is the goal that that idea i would just i would tell that person and what was my one takeaway is that hey if i love my niche and if i and if i care about my niche uh, it doesn't really matter the method it doesn't really matter mm. the whether it's a white paper or it's you know literally just going and knocking on people's doors mm -hmm. i'm going to find a way to like play in the street and offer those people something yeah that could change their lives greetings carl here what you just watched was just a teeny little clip of the workshop I did at the Society of Advice in August. And it was about how to attract your ideal client. It was, in fact, it was my ultimate guide to attracting your ideal client. And this workshop, I mean, who's this workshop really for, right? This workshop is for anyone who wants to be intentional about the advisory business that they want to run. Anyone who wants to feel relevant in someone's life. Anyone who wants to spread the love of solving people's problems and making their lives better. That's really who this workshop is for. And what you'll get if you watch the entire workshop is this one we went really deep on specific tactics interview questions. We had scripts and examples of how to write a white paper, exactly the format that you use, the three mindset shifts you need to make in order to be successful. And of course, a whole list of tactics on exactly how to do it. We even did some spot coaching to overcome objections and feelings people were having. We had, and, and we shared some real live examples of people who are working through this process right now. This workshop actually includes an actual template for the design of a successful white paper. Tools for every advisor so you can communicate more effectively, even if it's not in white papers. Do you know what I mean? Like these, these principles and these tools can be used in any content that you're creating. So I think you will find this massively valuable. So give it a shot. In fact, if you want to, here's um, how you do it. The Society of Advice is a group of like-minded advisors that meet every month for 90 minutes. And the August workshop was what I just outlined. Now, we have not been, we've been doing this for four, almost five years. We have not been very good at explaining the value of joining the society. So instead, we decided to do something crazy. Just come and see. Just come and see for yourself. We've made your first month free, not as a sales tactic, but just because we want you to come and see. And we know what will happen. If it's for you and you find it valuable, you'll stay. If it's not for you or you don't find it value, valuable for one reason or another, you'll cancel. And we're fine either way. We just want you to come and see. So that's the free trial offer. You can go to the Society of Advice 
com and sign up for the free trial. That will give you access to the the current the last recording, which if you join in the next 30 days, you'll be able to see this August workshop. And it will allow you to attend the next live session, which we'd encourage you to do. Just check it out. If it doesn't work for you, cancel. High fives, hugs next time we see each other. It's all good. Just go to the societyofadvice.com to take me up on that offer. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>